All right. Well, thank you for joining us. This is a CE National Digital Lab. We've got some people joining us here uh, on our Zoom call. We've got uh, three of my good buddies from youth ministry. We're going to be talking today about uh, what it looks like to have, uh, what, what's, what's greater importance? What's your focus? Um, so if you don't know me, my name's Eric Miller, and I am the Director of Ministry Operations with CE National. Uh, I've been on this awesome team now for several months, uh, and we are excited to do another digital lab to be uh, talking today about youth ministry, uh, youth ministry focus. Uh, so I've got three youth pastors with me today. I'll go ahead and introduce them. Uh, we've got Fletcher Abbott. Uh, Fletcher is the high school director at Grace Community Church in Frederick, Maryland. Uh, then we've got uh, Tony Villafane, and he is the director of students on uh, leadership development at Gateway Church in Parksburg, PA. Uh, we've got another PA guy. We've got uh, Ben Long, who is the associate pastor uh, at Liberty Grace in Johnstown. So uh, Frederick, Maryland is, is where I have been from, so I'm partial to uh, Fletcher and the qualifications today to join this call where you have to have good facial hair. So well done, <laughs> well done, well done. Love it. Uh, thanks, guys, for joining us. We, uh, we're going to talk about what it means to have uh, a focus within our, the scope of our youth ministry today. Uh, where do we invest our time? Where do we invest uh, our energies, whether it's uh, with students, e every student ministry has a focus on on their students. But uh, we're going to dive in today on what does it look like to have a student leadership emphasis? What does it look like to focus your time, attention, resources on our adult volunteers or even our parents? Uh, and we'll talk through is one greater than the other. So uh, before we dive into that, I do want to make one quick announcement. Uh, if you have not yet heard the news about CE Nationals Youth Conference, Momentum Youth Conference, uh, we're very sad. I'm heartbroken to announce that that is canceled for this summer. Um, can I just say we waited longer than everyone else? It was like a big game of chicken, uh, right? And <laughs> we, we held out until the very end. We were trying so hard. Um, our, our staff, the Momentum team, they worked their tails off. Uh, trying to figure out if it was even possible uh, to pull off Momentum Youth Conference this year, and it was not. So we are we are heartbroken about that. Um, but we will be back next summer uh, for the best week of the summer, Momentum Youth Conference. If you or your students signed up and paid, uh, our registrar will be reaching out to you uh, about refunds. We're going to refund all but $25. We even changed that. Uh, we were going to refund all but $75, but because of circumstances, we're uh, we know that families can use that extra cash. Um, so we're going to refund all but $25. And if it, I know people are going to ask, uh, maybe some of you guys here on this call are going to ask, uh, that $25 we're going to hold on to just as an administrative fee uh, because that does help us recoup some of the cost. Even though we're canceling momentum, there are still refunds and things that we're not able to get back ourselves. Um, and so even our staff involvement. So that will go towards that. So. Uh, if you have any questions, reach out to us. We'd be happy to answer that, uh, but we're sad about that. So let's dive into our topic today. Our, these digital labs, we hope, uh, are, are helpful to you, to equip you, to, to help you even have a new idea uh, and to gain a different perspective. Uh, but all of these, uh, these groups that we're going to be talking about today, students, student leaders, uh, parents, adult volunteers, they're all important when it comes to to youth ministry, uh, but what's a student leader, what's a youth leader to do when it comes time to planning your event? How do you do that? What does that look like? Uh, so today we're gonna talk through that. What's the focus? What's the scope of your youth ministry? Uh, so why don't we do this? I'm gonna stop talking and let you guys introduce yourself a little bit longer. Why don't you tell us your name uh, again one more time, where, uh, how long you've been at the church that you're at and just any other uh, ministry experience beyond that. So. Why don't we start with you, Tony? Yeah. Uh, so I am again, Tony Villafane. I work at Gateway Church in Parksburg, Pennsylvania. I have been uh, the director of students and leadership development now for uh, a year and a half. And it is my uh, first vocational uh, church job. I've done a ton of volunteer positions and other um, youth ministry capacities or parachurch ministries, but uh, this is my first uh, uh, vocational job here. And I absolutely am in love with being uh, the, the director of students there where I oversee fifth 
through 12th grade, along with uh, a leadership development component uh, at the church. And so um, it's, a, it's a delight for me to be on to be able to talk a little bit about uh, where should a focus be, because it's, it's a point of tension uh, in, this, in this conversation of how do we allocate our time best. Uh, but, um, but yeah, that's just a little bit uh, about me. Yeah, thanks, Tony. You've been doing a great job. Uh, we've we've been Facebook friends, I think, for all of like a month now. But That's right. uh, your lead pastor, uh, Scott Feather, was on our very first digital lab that we did uh, mm. back in March, and he did a great job. But he had nothing but good things to say about you, and um, so we're we're glad to have you. So thanks, Ben. What about you? Uh, my name is Ben Long. I'm the associate pastor at Liberty Grace Church in Johnstown. Uh, one of my main focuses is the youth ministry here. My, my shirt's got our name on it. Veracity is our, our youth group name, if you hear me throw that out. During the conversation, that's what I'm talking about. Um, I've been here almost eight years now, which is really hard to believe that it's been that long. It's, it's pretty crazy. Um, interesting fact, before I was here, I taught science to juvenile delinquents for four years. Um, at a, a, like a juvenile detention facility um, in Huntington County, Pennsylvania. But uh, I enjoy youth ministry a, a whole lot more than working with juvenile delinquents. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. Well, Ben, you're, you're an awesome guy. I'm glad to have you on this call. Uh, ben and I have known each other for a long time in our work with Camp Manawagon. Uh, it's an amazing camp and great programs up there. So i uh, delighted to have Ben on today. All right, Fletcher Abbott, tell us a little about bit about yourself. Yeah, I'm Fletcher. I'm the high school director at uh, Grace Community Church in Frederick, Maryland. Uh, as Eric said, that was actually the church that he was a part of. He was the uh, youth pastor out there until they uh, were looking at transitioning his role and needed to bring someone else on, and they found me. It's been two years since the beginning of this month, actually, was when I started out there. Uh, before then, I was working on my master's at Liberty University. Before that, I was a youth pastor for a couple of years at a tiny little town in Kansas called Marysville. Uh, so between all that, I've had nine years of ministry education and none of it prepared me for what we're doing right now. So for what it's worth. So true, so true. Fletcher is, is doing an awesome job with the high school ministry there in Frederick. So. Uh, thank you guys for, for joining us. I know all of you within your youth ministries, you have these components uh, of obviously an emphasis on students, uh, but some dynamic of student leadership, uh, parents, adult volunteers. Uh, so let's dive into our, our topic here. Why don't you uh, give us some just a, a broad overview of your youth ministry. Give us kind of the context of uh, when do you meet? What does it look like? Uh, the range and scope of what your ministry is on some of the details before we dive in, just so our listeners kind of understand where, uh, where you're coming from and what we're addressing here. Yeah. So, uh, I have, um, I have our youth, our student ministry program that meets on Wednesday evenings, uh, pro, uh, pre, pre coronavirus, if you will. And so, uh, 6.30 to 8.30 was our program. Uh, we had 7th through 12th graders that met together. Um, and coming on staff, I personally had never been a part of a youth ministry that had middle school and high school together. My, my own youth group experience was it was separated middle school, high school. I served in a, a youth ministry uh, in college and seminary that was middle school, high school separated. But um, this was my first. And so I was a little skeptical, if I'm being honest, of how that was going to go. Uh, but I've been actually, I've been so pleasantly surprised with how the, the upperclassmen interact with the lower class and the lower class with the upper and though obviously this isn't like an absolute statement uh, across the board but for, for my context at Gateway it's been pleasantly surprising just to see how they the the, the groups mix very well together and so um, and then I have uh, another uh, piece of it that I'll be speaking into today is well. I have a student leadership team uh, that I oversee as well um, and so that's been a blast and a joy to be able to interact with them and to pour into these individual students who, who have stepped onto our student leadership team and so that's a little bit of a context in my ministry. Awesome. Uh, we have kind of pre-coronavirus we, we had 15 to 20 students uh, as part of our student ministry we meet on Wednesday nights uh, usually from 6.30 to 8.30-ish. Um, it's 6th through 12th grade. We spend, no, on a normal Wednesday night, we spend uh, part of the time together, and then part of the time we break up into small groups 
uh, usually divided by age and gender. Um, and so we do like a lesson together and then discuss it in the small group. So uh, that makes a little better dynamic with a, a wider age range. Um, yeah, we, we try and do some cool stuff, spend some time um, just hanging out before we actually start the programming. Uh, one of my volunteers makes a meal every Wednesday night, so we get to eat together. So some of the cool stuff you can do when you have a, a small group of students. Um, we as well have a student leadership team, and we're actually going to be in the process of pretty much rebuilding that this fall because uh, I had three students on the student leadership team uh, this past school year. Two of them are graduating, uh, so I only have one left, and we're actually at a, kind of a weird transition in the youth group in general. Uh, this past school year, we had five or six seniors and then not much of anyone until like sixth and seventh grade. So we'll have a group that moves out and then a bunch of young kids. So it'll be cool to, to kind of rebuild again and, and start to rebuild that student leadership core again. Uh, yeah, for us, um, we call ourselves a student led adult supported uh, youth ministry. Uh, so when I came on board, actually, uh, we were just in the beginning of the process of kind of splitting our middle school and high school groups within our ministry. Uh, so we have a middle school director as well at Grace, and we actually still meet on the same night, and middle school and high school is actually even still gathered together for the worship part of the evening, but then we're split for, for teaching activities and for our small group time as well. Uh, we've been having that set up now for a little over a year with that kind of a system as we've kind of gradually been transitioning into this uh, more unique split of middle school and high school on Wednesday nights. Cool. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Um, so, so you all understand the tension, right? Then in youth ministry, you've got your, your normal Wednesday night population of students uh, that you're trying to invest in. You've got your student leadership team that you're, you're trying to help train and equip them and, and build them up and encourage them. You've got adult volunteers. Um, probably we, we, every youth ministry needs more adult volunteers, I'm sure. Um, and then you've got your parents, right? So what does balance look like in this area for you guys? Kind of walk me through um, what's your, your mindset, your focus on this, um, I don't know that there's a right or wrong answer here, but uh, what's your, your focus in terms of those four areas and dynamics uh, and how they relate to your time and energy? I think the first thing I thought about is for all of those groups and for all the individuals in those groups, I need to have some level of relationship with all of them. I think that's the, the biggest priority, first of all. I, not that you have to have a deep relationship with everyone in all of those groups, but uh, at least have to have kind of a friendly, engaging relationship um, with all of those so they know a little bit who I am and, and so they can come to me and, and talk to me if the, there's a crisis, if they have questions, if they have issues. Um, I had an experience uh, in a, another youth group I, I was a part of where some of the girls complained that the, the pastor at that time didn't really connect with them, didn't really talk to them at all. And, and so that was my first kind of thought and answer to this is like, I, I don't want to be in that situation where any group, whether it be students or volunteers or adults would come and say, uh, Ben just completely ignores us. Uh, maybe an individual would say, I wish he'd pour a little bit more into me individually, but uh, overall I want to have some connection with kind of, everybody in, in all of those groups at, at some level. And, and it helps a little bit to be in a smaller youth group and in, in a smaller church. It makes it a little bit easier. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Fletcher? Yeah. I mean, I, f first off, Ben's point about the relationship in each group is absolutely critical. Uh, whenever I have opportunities to, to have FaceTime or be up front within any of those groups, I, I try and do so. So there's that that relational element there. Uh, I would say in terms of just on, on a basic level of balance between those groups, I, I also look at it uh, a little bit more from a pragmatic standpoint of with the resources I have, 
how do I divide those in such a way where I get the most bang for my buck? <laughs> uh, in a way, what's, what's going to have the most long lasting impact that's going to benefit all four of those groups as a whole uh, is usually the angle that I tackle it from. Uh, and I'm sure we'll talk about this a lot more today too, but in terms of where we kind of all lean on, if there's any kind of specific group that we kind of put more of those resources into. Uh, but I would say ultimately the time that you put into any group is to make sure that's not just a benefit for those people, but how is it impacting your, your entire ministry overall? Uh, and that's where I think the balance piece comes in. And I think the other key area is when I'm with someone in that group, I strive to make sure they don't feel like they're any different from any other group in terms of the quality of time. When I'm talking to someone, I want them to know that that's where my time in that moment and energy is dedicated towards is that individual, whether it's a parent, a student, a volunteer, or one of the student leaders. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. What about you, Tony? Yeah. Uh, one thought that came to mind, uh, Eric, right when you said like, how do we balance it? Uh, I thought to myself, you can't <laughs> like, there's no way that you can like, okay. So like, if you think of it like a, like a hundred percent, right? Like, okay. So I'm going to give, uh, if we're talking three groups of people, I'm going to give 33% of my time to this group, 33% of my time to this group and 33% of the time to this group. And then I get 1%. I'm be selfish. Uh, but, uh, uh, you, you, and then you say, okay, I'm going to allocate all my time every single week in that way. It's impossible because we live in such a fluid environment in ministry and it's, we have to be flexible. And so the, the, one of the, I don't know, uh, precursors or foundational like ideas I would have to like I, I need to remind myself is that I need to live under the principle of prioritization and not and not so much balance um, because balance in my mind is a myth <laughs> there's no way that we can live our, our ministries completely balanced um, and we're going to disappoint somebody at some time and so it's this idea that when I'm thinking about my youth staff when I'm thinking about my student leaders when I'm thinking about my parents how, who do I need to prioritize this week this month uh, this season, what, whatever it may be. And obviously it shifts day to day and there's a lot of discernment that's needed um, with this. But um, I think that we would go insane if we try to equally balance everything each week. And so this idea of the principle of prioritization, I think would be necessary uh, for us to uh, keep sanity. <laughs> yeah, no, and you're, you're exactly right. The, the guys that we talked with our, our youth leaders on uh, Tuesday of, of kind of the same idea in the youth ministry focus, what's a, a greater importance do you have Bible study or do you have fun? And it, it's, it's, it's a question just to get us started and, and to engage. Uh, I was teasing them that it was clickbait for uh, our friends on in, the internet to be curious about uh, this topic of conversation. But Tony, you're exactly right. It, it, it really is hard. I think sometimes balance is a myth uh, in youth ministry, especially in youth, in ministry, especially. Um, but it, it really is knowing and understanding those dynamics and, and their seasons for, for each one probably, right? Mm, uh, so I, I'm sure each of you guys understand spending some of your uh, time at the end of the summer or early fall probably heavy on recruiting, right? Uh, getting those adult volunteers and onboarding them, uh, making sure that you're ready for a new year. Uh, you probably have a time where uh, maybe it's, you know, as the school year's winding down where you're focused more on your students' Uh, schools ending and you get to invest in them. It's probably a time in the middle of the school year where you invest in, in your student leaders and you're trying to pass the baton to them and, and encourage them in ways. And it, it, it all looks different. So really, you're exactly right. It's, it's not like, you know, this perfectly even thing. So um, thank you for saying that. Yeah. Um, what, what does that, that, that look like for you guys in your ministry? What, how do you, how do you kind of balance each of those or how do you focus on each of those groups or categories within your ministry? What does it look like for you guys? Uh, I think a lot of my focus ends up being on my, my student leaders and my volunteers, uh, because if I focus on those two areas, it can help in the other areas as well. Um, Cause it, to be honest, the super quiet middle school girl is probably not going to have a deep relationship with me. Uh, but if I can be friendly with her a little bit and, and show her that courtesy, and then I've equipped and empowered student leaders and volunteers to go build a deeper relationship with her, then she's going to feel loved and connected to the group and ultimately hopefully connected to Jesus. 
and it it helps with parents as well. I've had situations where um, a mom has a concern about her daughter and I'm able to talk with one of my female volunteers about that and then she can go address that with mom and and daughter who she probably has a better relationship, a closer relationship and connection with anyway. And then I can just kind of come alongside and, and kind of debrief and, and whatever after the fact with them. And, and that saves me some time and, and energy in that. And is is probably more effective in some ways to have that coming from a female leader than from myself. So uh, I think I spent a lot of time investing in the student leaders and the volunteers trying to equip and empower them to go and, and serve and do stuff. Um, and so I, I feel like that helps my group out somewhat. Great. Tony, what about uh, you guys? Uh, I'm a, I'm a big proponent of the idea of looking at your mission and your values and having them close to you, close to your, close to your mind and your heart. If, and as you look through this, your scope and cycle of what you're doing throughout the year with these groups, uh, if you can pinpoint how it comes back to the vision, mission and vision, you're great. If you can't, I think that you should cut it out. Um, and so for, for us, uh, our values, I'm a, so I'm a product of Lancaster Bible College as I got my undergraduate and graduate degree from there. And in the church and ministry leadership departments, uh, they really drilled in this idea of, uh, uh, that we are head, heart, and hands. So like, there's not just like, we're not just a body, we're not just soul, we're not just spirit, we're all these things together. And so I've kind of taken our values and I've put them into this idea of that we are ahead, we're, 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 we're mentally always trying to understand our worldview um, and, and even growing in our own uh, awareness of how God's wired us, um, mentally speaking, uh, the heart that we're spiritually formed and we have a calling and what are we being called into? Um, and then this idea of hands that we're meant to be live in community uh, and we're meant to go and serve. And so for me, personally i continually think through this head heart hands mentality of of what am i doing with my with my youth staff what am i doing with my student leaders what am i doing with my parents that can go back to this idea of head heart hands and i and i try to and i can get to the get to this a little bit later but how can i practically address each area um in all three of those um all three of those um audiences hmm. that's awesome yeah i love that fletcher what about you guys what is that what is that equality look like there <laughs> Yeah, I, I would say we definitely put a emphasis within, uh, kind of like Ben been saying, within our student leaders and our volunteers. Uh, and, and part of that for us is coming to the realization that can be painful, and that is we are incapable of doing all of it. <laughs> uh, it can't all rest on, on me. It can't all rest on our middle school director. It's, it's this group effort that's involved in that there. So when we can invest in the key leaders uh, to one, strengthen them and help in their growth and development, it benefits the whole in a way that we couldn't if it was just me trying to carry all, all the things. Uh, and, and I even look at it in the context of uh, Jesus, right? I mean, Jesus, you could argue, had all these different kind of categories of people that he is trying to to influence and help and minister to during his time here on earth. But he spends the primor primary amount of his resources in a very select group and then tells those guys, go and do what I've been doing to you. Go and do it for others. And that is what had this greater effect. Uh, so we've kind of took it from that angle in terms of where we put our emphasis. Uh, it's prime, it's, the emphasis has been when our student leaders and then also our adult uh, we, we call them our youth staff, uh, our, our, our servant leaders that help in the ministry as well. Mm. Yeah, that's great. Uh, I want to make mention too, this is probably a good moment to just pause and, and reference that uh, for anybody who's watching, whether on our Zoom call here in the webinar feature uh, or on Facebook, if you have any questions for these guys, if there's uh, thoughts that are coming to your mind as you're saying something like, hey, Fletcher, tell me more about your youth staff or uh, whatever, then, then shoot us a question uh, there in the comments on Facebook or in the Q&A box here on Zoom, uh, and, and we'll, we'll talk that through with these guys. So um, please feel free to make use of that feature. Uh, one of the questions that, as you guys were just mentioning, uh, I would love to know, like, what, what is the dynamic between your students and your student leaders look like? How do you guys 
uh, how do you identify a student leader and how do you kind of pull them out uh, from the, the core group and what's your, what's your process look like to develop them? Uh, for me, w one of the primary things I look for is someone who's willing. <laughs> uh, someone who has a desire to grow, a desire to be a leader, even if maybe they don't have all those qualities yet. I'm very interested in pouring more resources into that person because typically my experience has been they're not going to go along with me kicking and screaming along the way, but do it very willingly. Uh, I, one example I could give was we actually had one guy that had applied for student leadership last year and, and he wasn't really ready. Uh, he, he wasn't a spot where he was going to be ready to step up into that role. And, and there were a variety of factors into that. One of the main being that the whole Christianity thing was brand new uh, to, to, to this guy to begin with. Uh, but what I was able to do instead is start a discipleship group that included two of my current guy leaders and then brought this guy into that as well to where we've spent the year. Well, I started just singly with him, but then half of the year I added these guys into as well where we, they've been kind of learning how to disciple each other and grow together in their faith. And these other two leaders is neat are training. Now they're involved in training this future leader in the ministry as well. So a lot of times it's inviting my current leaders in on that process. Uh, Cause again, they can reach and help these other students in ways that I may not be able to as effectively all the time. Mm. Yeah. Very cool. Tony, what's that look like for you guys? Um, <clears throat> so we have our student leadership team that is um, Require, required for lack of better words uh, to step into like whether it's uh, um, helping with the check-in table, helping out with the worship team, with with games, announcements, etc. Um, and so uh, we have a you know a good a decent working system again pre-coronavirus. Uh, we had good working system of what that looked like. Um, but uh, one one principle I guess I I um, I operate under, or I try to always have a, a visual scan of this, um, is just, is looking around seeing, okay, who is somebody who's an up and coming leader, um, who's an up, who has, has, has a little bit extra maturity or has a little bit extra, um, willingness to serve, um, is always, is, is consistent in their attendance and then just shoulder tap them and say, Hey, uh, well, you're always here super early. What if, what if you served on the check-in team uh, or, Hey, like you seem like you're, you're very, you know, uh, energetic person. How would you be up, uh, go up on stage and making announcements? Um, and, uh, so just trying to shoulder tap students and just say like, Hey, like I see something, would you be willing? Uh, and obviously you're not going to pressure them, not going to guilt trip them. It has to be their desire and their willingness, but just being willing to ask and just say, Hey, I see this in you what do you think about it um, as not as and trying to give them as much opportunity as possible outside of the student leadership team. Mm, nice. Yeah. Mm. Similar to Tony, uh, like I, I try and look for people that are kind of already doing it, already stepping up and taking some leadership. And overall we try to build a, a culture of, of family in our group where this isn't something that myself and the other adult volunteers are doing for you. This is, a group we're all in together and so uh, we try and encourage everybody jump in and be a part and and help out and even if it's cleaning up dishes and tables after we have a meal together like everybody jump in and do a little bit and and make it less of like a program that we're doing for you and more of kind of a, a group we're all in together and then as we do that I'm looking for people that are really stepping up and and really jumping in and doing more and being more engaged. And, and then those are the people that I'll go to and approach to, to be a student leader so that we can more intentionally focus on building that leadership ability in them and, and helping them to really realize their potential and, and ability as leaders. Okay. So let's, let's dive a little deeper on that. Uh, you all have a, a Wednesday night, like a large group gathering that you, you use. Um, and, and you all have student leaders within your ministries. How, what does that look like? Is there a, is there a event for your student leaders? Is it just like Tony, you're saying like, I have them join a team. Like what, is there some, some form of uh, a pathway or a, a format that you guys use um, to meet with your student leaders separately than your large group gathering? Hmm. We, uh, we have a separate meeting uh, gathering and that's, 
look different over time. Uh, it used to be we did a monthly meeting uh, with uh, just our student leaders where uh, we would take some of that time for planning, uh, but would also use a good portion of that time for personal development of our student leaders. Um, early on, it was a lot more of, uh, I kind of recognize for some of our student leaders, they struggled with, uh, I know we don't necessarily like to use the word balance, but they, they ran themselves ragged, <laughs> typically. So it was a lot of kind of helping them of how do you kind of take a step back and care for yourself in order to lead others well. Uh, so a lot of our training has involved like that in the past. Uh, but this past year, what we had actually done too uh, was we, we technically have three different leader teams within our ministry. We have our high school student leaders. Uh, our middle school director has also done an amazing job at creating a middle school leadership team. And then we have our adult volunteers as well. Uh, so what we did is four times throughout the year, we set up these joint meetings that consisted of our middle school leaders, our high school leaders, and our adult volunteers to kind of keep all these teams on the same page uh, and kind of dream and pray over our big events that we'd have coming up as well. So we had this investment that kind of spanned across all three groups for any of the, the big things that we had going on in the ministry. Nice. Very cool. Yeah. Ben, what about you? What does that student leadership dynamic look like? Um, we, we always have tried to have a, a separate time with them. It's looked different all throughout my years. Uh, the one consistent thing is to try and get together with them in August before the school year starts, usually have them over to my house, have a meal and just talk through expectations, talk through some planning for the year that type of stuff. And then throughout the year, try to get together with them. And like I said, it's looked different all throughout my time here. At, at one point in time, we were meeting every other Wednesday night, we would grab dinner before youth group and have a meeting, do some training and development, uh, do some planning stuff uh, that worked for a while. And then I got some different leaders that were involved in a million things at school. And it became impossible to find a time for all of them to get together. So we'd start, I'd, I'd meet individually with the, the male leaders and one of the uh, female adults would meet with the, the female student leaders. And then we would try and get together once a month or something for a few minutes after our regular youth meeting to talk planning type stuff. Um, so it's, it's looked different, but uh, we've always tried to find some intentional time just with those students uh, to pour into them and to, to disciple them and to, to build them up. And then as far as their role, just within uh, the actual youth meeting and, and events, they're usually the ones kind of a, I lean on, like, like I said earlier, we try and get everybody involved in helping out. But if I need somebody specifically for something, they're usually the ones I'll, I'll lean on to say, hey, can you specifically help with this? Um, we usually try and challenge them at least once in the fall and once in the spring to share like the, the lesson. It usually ends up being kind of a short devotional, uh, but one Wednesday night share from God's word or share from your testimony or or something to, to get them up front doing that a little bit. Um, and then when we go on trips and activities, there's sometimes ones I lean on in smaller groups when we're doing stuff. Um, it was actually, it was pretty cool. One of the things we did this spring for one of our youth meetings is that I had a, a Zoom like this with a couple former student leaders. And one of the questions I asked them was like, what, what was the impact of student leadership on you and um, all of them talked about how it helped them be better leaders outside to see their potential as leaders but one of the things that really stuck out to me that I had never thought about as the impact of student leadership is they said how much it, it pushed them to step out of their comfort zone and do stuff. Um, a couple of them cited specifically going to Urban Hope and one of the things you usually do when you're at Urban Hope is break up into smaller groups and go around the community talking to people. And they said because they were student leaders, there was more of a pressure when you're in that group. There's always everybody looking at themselves, who's going to talk, who's going to talk. And there was that pressure, well, I'm a student leader, I should step up and talk. 
but they shared how that ended up ultimately being a really good thing in their life because it, it pushed them out of their comfort zone and they, they stepped up and did it. And then they realized, wait, yeah, I can do this. This isn't as bad as I thought it would be. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was really cool to hear that from them, just the impact that that had on them, it, even not necessarily an intentional thing, but just because they had been given that rule and feeling like I need to step up into this rule, it, it caused them to raise their expectations of themselves. Oh, praise God. That's awesome. Tony, what about you guys? Uh, well, first off, uh, Ben, I love the idea of bringing in former student leaders uh, to the current team. That's a, that's a great idea that anyone listening should, should steal that idea. Uh, but, um, and then uh, Fletcher, uh, I'm super encouraged to hear you say that you have middle schools, a uh, middle school leadership team, student leadership team, because that's currently what I'm like, trying to do like so our our student leadership team used to be 10th through 12th grade uh last year i changed it to 9th through 12th grade um and i would love to get 7th and 8th grade for my youth ministry as well but just trying to figure out the balance of of how do i do that tactfully and well um right now um but um at the beginning of the year we have a a student leadership retreat it's a 24-hour experience that we just go over to somebody's house uh, that graciously uh uh, lets us stay there and that's been that has been a really great time opportunity to connect the team and, and and um you know talk about the scope and cycle for the year Etc. and uh, give a team bonding opportunity and then from there it's a it's usually once a month that we get together um, on the weekends and it's a, a time of training and a time of kind of administrative okay what you know what events need to be talked about because they have a lot they have a big hand in things like you know our Super Bowl party or the Christmas party or uh, some other bigger games that we do throughout the year and so we'll talk about that um, I, I try to have you know as balanced as possible you know where you do leadership development and they have ownership of the ministry um, it's a tension I do wrestle with uh, how much do I give to them to you know okay let's talk about this and um, and maybe it ends up we spin our wheels a little too long on this because you know they can't come to a decision or whatever versus me just trying to make the decision on my own uh, not wanting to lopsided one way or the other. But one thing I've been doing this year um, with our student leaders is going through Habitudes uh, by Tim Elmore. He has a ton of curriculum around um, uh, student leadership and other leaders, leadership content in general. And so that's something that I uh, would definitely recommend for other people to use as we've been using it this year. Um, another thing that I've been doing is pushing them through some spiritual developments of, uh, I can't take the, I can't take the, um, the credit for this, but because um, it came from Lancaster Bible College, but it's called a character contract. Um, and it's basically where you, uh, they, there's this, you know, full sheet of, you know, different characters and whatnot pieces. And you select one um, for the semester, for the year, and you just work through, okay, how am I going to intentionally grow? in this character and I get I I pair them up within the student leadership team and they meet together uh every time we meet for 10-15 minutes on the back end and they just uh, connect over how have they been uh pushing themselves and growing in this specific character piece and so that's been that's been cool a a lot of this also has been a trial run this year I kind of bulked up the student leadership team uh than previous years um and so it's all been an experiment to some degree on how these things have been going but um so but that's been I think it's been going pretty well in that regard and then again just giving them opportunities to to lead within the ministry itself as, as best as possible um knowing their strengths uh but also knowing where to push them um as well and so that's kind of been what been this that's been the framework for us nice yes it it's so hard tony you're exactly right that when you're when you're operating with students uh as a youth pastor and you're trying to figure out how do you invest your time and energy uh you, your your general population of students they see that you have a leadership team most most uh, youth ministries that have a leadership team in some way, shape, or form, it's known to the students, Ben, you're, you're hitting the nail on the head, that uh, everybody's looking at the student leaders like, okay, you're a leader, you're supposed to do something now, right? Um, but it can often create this tension where within your, your ministry, if you're spending so much time with your student leaders, that then the other students think that you're not available to them or approachable to them. Uh, I remember when I was at Frederick, I actually had uh, a student call me out on it one night. Uh, and and I, you know, I, I said, hey, how are you? And asked her how she was doing. And she gave me this glare. And I was like, oh, my word. So she's like, what do you care? And I, I was like, what do you what are you talking about? Like, I'm, 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 I do care. I genuinely am asking you how you're doing. And she's like, well, all you care about is the student leaders. And I, that hurt. And, and I, you know, I had to, for a, 
I'll be honest, for a couple of days, I was like, well, she doesn't know what she's talking about. And I got all worked up about it, right? But God used that in such a unique way to really soften my heart, to realize that I, my balance was probably, my focus was probably more on those student leaders than they were on being available and, and talking to the rest of the students, building those relationships, Ben, like you're talking about. So that is so important. Uh, on that that balance of of investing our time wisely within uh, within them developing leaders, yes, uh, we're all in agreement. It sounds like that that's an important thing, but still, it's for uh, not not to forsake the rest of our group. So let's transition and think through on an adult side with volunteers and with parents. Uh, kind of give us an overview of what does that look like, and how do you guys do that? How do you invest in your volunteers, uh, and what what things do you have in place? Uh, to help train and equip parents who I'm sure we would all agree should be the primary discipler of our students. So what does that look like for you guys? Tony, let's start with you. We'll go back around the circle this way. <laughs> all right. We do, do you want, are we hitting student leaders or parents? Uh, or sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, youth, youth volunteers. Volunteers, okay, cool. adults and parents. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, um, with my youth, uh, I also call my team uh, youth staff, uh, just like Fletcher does. Um, and uh, so for my youth staff, I meet with them once a month as well. Um, and we're using curriculum uh, from Download Youth Ministry, actually. They have, a, they have some really good resources on training uh, youth volunteers. And so we've been using their uh, Download Youth Ministry, uh, or uh, what's it, University, Download Youth I can't remember what it's called now, but uh, it's it's within their curriculum, and uh, that's been that's been pretty good to be able to use. Um, and so, you know, I hold them to, uh, you know, it's it's su super difficult with volunteers because you want to hold them to some type of expectation, uh, but you also don't want to put too much on them as knowing that they're volunteers. And so that's that really is a a, a tension for a point of tension for me of, of how do I express expectations but also show grace when they knowing that they're volunteers. And so, um, uh, so we're we're still working through that if I'm being honest, but uh, having you know the staff meetings that are once a month being there at Wednesday nights is uh, obviously those are expectations um, and uh, trying to have touch points with students throughout the month outside of the youth programming night that's a, some type of an expectation uh, then other than that I kind of tell them saying hey like whatever events you can give me outside of that retreats and and you know pool parties or whatever else like that like that's uh if you can give that to me that's a gift <laughs> um and and so trying to you know again show as much flexibility as possible um that's also where i try to would, i would lean into maybe some parents as well where if i was short for for a, a, an event then i would ask a couple of rock star parents that i know that are uh in my in the back of my head there they said hey if you ever need help just you know holler out and so um having a couple of those on hand is always really nice <laughs> um and so when, but when it comes to parents um I am, I try to be as communicative as possible with them. And so I know that if I communicate with them, they feel, uh, they, they can, the, the trust level goes up, the security level goes up. It's, so I send out an email every single week, uh, to parents saying, Hey, here's what's going on in our ministry for this week. Um, and, and so that's one thing that I do. Um, I'm a huge fan of, uh, Axis Youth Ministry Organization. Um, Axis is based in Colorado, and they have a, amazing resources for 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 just uh, helping parents be more uh, in the know of culture and and just as, with an ever shape ever shifting youth culture as well. And so um, they have a ton of resources. Axis.org. Um, you can go and search them, and they have a ton of stuff. So I put out a lot of what Axis puts out, um, and and so that's been a huge proponent of the way that I try to. Uh, train and minister to my parents. And then also we do a, a time of um, a snack at the end of youth group every Wednesday night. And so I have two parents volunteer regularly to help step in with that. So they can just kind of see, hey, what's going on on a Wednesday night and to give them an opportunity uh, to be involved as well. And so those are some of the ways that I involve my youth staff and my parents. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Ben, what about you? Um, I think like Tony kind of hinted at a good thing with volunteers is to have kind of different levels of volunteers. Um, like I've always kind of had those couple volunteers that are kind of my, my right hand volunteers and I'm talking with them all the time about planning and about students and, and all that stuff. And they're just kind of involved in everything. And, and then there's some that are just kind of show up to events and activities and, and, build some relationships with the students and just try and keep them abreast of what's going on and and then to try and have those other whether they're 
parents or just other adults in the church that when you need an extra hand, you can call them or you need food for an event, you know, you can call that person and they'll, they'll provide some food. So I think having just those different tiers of volunteer, whether you formally lay that out or, or just kind of in your head, you know, where people are at. And I think a, a big thing I've learned and seen this scene is communication with volunteers that you, you have to make sure you're on the same page with all your volunteers as far as just vision and where you're at with students and especially if there's a student concern or issue that you're just talking with them and and you're on the same page with that volunteer that's dealing with that issue with your volunteers in general um, because when you have that harmony things work a whole lot better and when you have disharmony then that just leads to to bigger issues and so uh, I've not always been the best at keeping that communication open, but uh, that's one of the things I've learned as I've gone along, just try and keep communicating and over communicating, especially with those volunteers that are kind of your right hand volunteers. And the, the same with parents as well to, to be communicating with them, make sure they're aware of what's going on, uh, that sort of stuff. Be aware of what you're doing uh, in the youth group and, in events and activities. Um, one other thing I was thinking about with parents that I try and do, and, and again, it helps that I'm in a, a smaller church, but I try not to always interact with them as Billy's parent, but at times to interact with them as Bob and Beth or whatever their names are, as, as fellow churchgoers in our church and, and sort of build an adult relationship with them, or at least with some of them as well. Because I think parents need to to trust us. They need to see our heart for Christ, our heart for the students. And, and that means we have to have, at times, more than just a your so-and-so's parent relationship. We need to have more of a personal relationship with them. And keep in mind that your parents are interconnected with each other. So if, if parent A trusts you and has a relationship with you, then they have a relationship with parent B and you might not have a real close relationship with parent B, but because parent B trusts parent A who trusts you, then they're, they're going to trust you as well. So if you have a real good relationship, personal relationship with some of your parents, then that can flow kind of through all your parents. And uh, one of the things I've benefited with a lot is having good relationships with some of my parents some of the times I've messed up or done dumb stuff, they kind of give me a pass because they know like where my heart and, and stuff is really at. So they can kind of give me a pass and maybe even help me smooth things over with other parents. Mm. Nice. Yeah. What, what youth pastor hasn't made mistakes in those areas? <laughs> yeah. Fletcher, what about you guys? What does that look like on an adult side? Golly, I don't know how to follow up after the great things that were said there, but I'll, I'll just share what, what we do, or at least what I try and do. Um, on the youth staff side, we also have uh, worked on doing monthly meetings for them as well. Uh, this past year, like I mentioned, with our hybrid meetings that look a little bit different. We're actually going to look at needing to tweak that again because we realized we were, the balance kind of got off a little bit for us this year in some ways on that. But uh, our, our key um, main frontline youth staff, we actually depend on quite a bit uh, because along with our usual flow for Wednesday nights before this coronavirus thing, where everything had happened, uh, we had a pretty central um, discipleship group system on Wednesday nights where following teaching, there would be a good chunk of time built in for our students to break out into groups and discuss that in length, actually going through a head, heart, hands model of questions, Tony, uh, on that. But we lean heavily on our youth staff to run those groups. And it's not just a Wednesday night thing for them. We're talking like they invest in these students and spend dedicated time interacting with them and building relationship with them. That way these students don't just have a relationship with me, don't just have a relationship with our middle school director, but with multiple adults. Uh, and, and we've learn that that actually helps them stick out in the church after they graduate when they have multiple intergenerational relationships. 
Uh, but one of the main things I'd say with our youth staff, beyond just the training, which we, we do try and do, we, we've been involved in a, uh, an annual training that Download Youth Ministry does and things like that with other churches in the area, which has been awesome. And those are all great things. But one of the things I think can be easy for us to lose sight of is we, we try very hard to make sure our youth staff know they are valued. Uh, we, we take time to appreciate them because I would argue more than any other volunteer position in church, youth ministry volunteers probably have one of the highest workloads of volunteers out of anybody, I would say. And I think any youth pastor would agree with that. Uh, so this year, normally this would be by the time we would be doing some kind of honoring thing to them. We we're actually going to try and do an honoring dinner for them and their spouses. And that's probably not going to work out, but we, we try and do something for them, uh, towards the end of the school year, especially just to show our real appreciation and gratitude to them. Uh, I think that's very necessary. That's a way that we kind of put a focus on our youth staff in that way. Uh, and, and as for parents, um, I, I really like what Tony and Ben were saying too on the communication piece. Uh, that's something that I've even had to learn as time goes on. We also try and do weekly emails, especially right now, because it's really the only, one of the only ways we have any communication right now with our parents. Uh, even during this coronavirus season, we actually partnered with our children's directors one time and did a, uh, a parent chat night on Zoom uh, for parents and our families just to connect with each other and talk about things they're struggling with, some common struggles they're having with their teens and kids during this season. So we try things like that. Uh, but I, 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 I'm really strong with what Ben was saying at the end, too, on the need for relationship. Uh, I think we have this irrational fear of this boogeyman of parents for us youth pastors that I think obviously is a bigger fear than it actually is in reality. Um, but the biggest way to cut through that is really just kind of build relationships. So I also try when I'm interacting with them, I interact with them as Bob and Beth, not as Billy's parents. Uh, I found that to be one of the most beneficial things, not just for them, but it's rewarding for me too. Uh, because for some of these parents, the reality is, as time goes on, they become my friends. And that, that's, that's a value even beyond just building that relationship with the parent, but that then helps me too and feeds me. Awesome. This is great stuff, man. There's been so many good little uh, nuggets and tips and things that uh, I hope for those of you who are watching this is beneficial and sparking some ideas of things uh, that you can do in your, in your ministry that may be effective at helping you reach uh, your students, uh, developing the student leadership team, uh, engaging your adult volunteers, or even bridging that gap with parents. So uh, I don't see any questions. I'll, I'll open it up one other time. If anybody has questions, uh, drop those in, in our Q&A box or in the comment box here there on Facebook. Uh, we'd love to try and answer those. Um, and, and just I'll, I'll ask you guys one last question because we're running out of time here. Uh, what's the one thing that in this area that if you get off this call and you don't say you're going to kick yourself, that you want to come make sure now's your chance, right? Give it to us. Uh, it could be anything related to this area or uh, even ask the guys on Tuesday, like um, what would you tell yourself maybe to phrase it in a different way uh, in your very first week of being a youth pastor? What, what advice would you give to yourself? Uh, what, what are your thoughts there on that as we wrap up our time here? It's a tough one. Think hard. <laughs> this doesn't directly answer the, your question, uh, Eric. It actually kind of goes back to what Ben and Fletcher were saying around parents. Um, and this is something for me that I have, uh, I've almost made it into like a little game for myself on the weekends. Uh, so I have, you know, Wednesday program. I don't really have anything for the students over the weekend. So this is my opportunity to engage with parents. And so my, my, my little game, if you will, is like, man, like I want to go and I want to go strike up a conversation with one, two, three, four sets of parents or whatever. And I just want to see if I, what can I say to them that's encouraging about their student, right? Because as they are, as they're home, uh, their parents usually see a lot of the worst of, of, of their kids, right? And I, and usually we get to see some of the best of their kids. And so I want to be able just to speak life into the parents and say, Hey, I saw, um, I saw Jenna do this. I saw Matt do this, or I just see this in the, I see a maturity in this way and just trying to have a moment just to speak life into them. Um, because, 
because you never know that could just be the breath of fresh air that they need to hear that they're not their parenting is not all for nothing <laughs> um and so i know for me every weekend i make it an intentional goal that i'm going to go and find a parent or two just to say hey i've noticed this in your students and i just want you to know that i'm encouraged by it and so that's something i know i've been doing that's awesome that that's a perfect answer for that yeah, yeah i love it uh, i would say for me um be willing to give yourself grace uh, you're, you're not going to get it right. Like, let, let me go ahead and take the pressure off you right now. You're, you're going to get it wrong at some point in this whole process. Your priorities at times will be off and skewed. That, that's okay. Um, and, and the other thing I'll say too, and this as well, as we've, we've talked about these four categories, cause that's what this has been about and, and that's what it should be about. But um, don't forget about the fifth category. Well, technically fifth, six, and that's yourself and your family. Uh, don't, don't lose sight of those priorities as well. Um, because the reality is we give the 25% to each of those categories and can so often leave nothing left for ourselves and for our families. And that is in my mind, quite possibly the biggest mistake you could ever make in ministry. Uh, I'd argue. Yeah, that's very good. Yeah. One other thing I said about was, uh, parents is, inviting them to be part of it sometimes being part of the youth group. I think that's been a, a good thing for us. Um, the, on Thanksgiving, like the Wednesday night before Thanksgiving every year, we have a big, we call it our, our veracity family Thanksgiving. And we always open it up. Parents can come and hang out and eat too. And just gives them an opportunity to see what's going on and be a part of it. Um, in the summer, we go to, uh, different houses every Wednesday night so people from the church volunteer their home and so that gives parents an opportunity to be a part of it if they're hosting it gives other just random adults in the church an opportunity to be part of it if they're hosting and um, it, it's been cool to see some of our students build relationships with some adults in the church that they normally probably wouldn't have interacted with because we went to their house and they talked to him a little bit at their house, and then that, that relationship kept going. So as many parents and other people as you can get involved and, and make a part of it, um, it is always a good thing. And uh, The other one little piece of advice I'd give myself uh, and continue to give my, myself is uh, just to always stay on top of stuff and don't let little stuff go. I mean, that doesn't exactly have to do with our conversation today, but I think that's, that's the biggest thing I've, I've learned and continue to learn through ministry and life in general is just to take care of stuff when it's small, even if it's scary and maybe you could push it under the rug and, and get away with it, just take care of it. And it's a lot easier on, on your mind and your heart and for the overall situation and health of your ministry and church. Very cool. Thank you guys. Thank you for sharing. Uh, I love your hearts. I love hearing you guys talk. We could, we could go uh, much deeper into all of these areas, I'm sure. So uh, thank you for your time. Uh, those of you who are watching, thank you for tuning in today to our digital lab. Uh, we're gonna have more of these coming up uh, through the month of June. Uh, we've been trying to do two a week. Uh, we're going to be switching to do one a week uh, here for the month of June as we, as we start heading into the summer months. So uh, if you have an idea for a digital lab or something that you would love for us at CE National to address, uh, please uh, reach out, contact us. We'd be happy to hear about that. Uh, and, and let's just wrap up our time in prayer. Fletcher, would you be willing to pray for us? Absolutely. I'd be happy to. Father, we are so grateful uh, that we can, even in this season, uh, remain as a community of people in ministry who are supporting one another. Uh, providing each other with uh, wisdom that we've been able to gain uh, as little as it might feel like sometimes. Uh, but we know that any wisdom or insight that we've gained has all come from you. So God, I, I lift up everyone who's been watching this uh, lab here today who or who may watch it afterwards. Uh, God, that you would be guiding them, Lord, that they would uh, be able to feel your presence as they are genuinely seeking after you and what you've been calling them to do within their ministries. 
I got I, I lift up uh, Tony and Ben here as well today too. It's been great to get to interact with them as well as with Eric and just hearing their hearts and what's going on in their ministries. I ask that you would be blessing them in a big way. Uh, and God, as things start to open back up, would you help us to keep a pace that is set for longevity, uh, that we wouldn't be rushing ourselves out of the gate without seeking after you and what it is that you have in mind for our next steps. Lift all this up in your son's name. Amen. Amen. Hey, thanks again, guys, for joining us. Uh, thank you for tuning in. If you're watching this uh, video and you've found this to be helpful uh, in, in an area of youth ministry, would you share this on your Facebook page? Would you uh, maybe even be willing to talk through with your team of, of leaders? And uh, we, we hope that this is something that would be of great value for you and your team on your church. So uh, on behalf of Ben and, and uh, Tony and Fletcher, thanks. Uh, I'm Eric with Seton National signing off. Have a good one.